What are we starting with this week? A uh, Spotify ooh, update. I was not prepared for that because the last two weeks, you've not been letting us guess. That's right. So I just assumed you'd, you'd tell us. I told you before we did the episode. So we're thanking our patrons because today's a patron vote of episode. Course. Oh, of course. Oh. And this is why I don't let you guess. No. So we're going to have to thank all of our patrons. Very special thank you to, to you all for uh, making this episode possible. If you want to join our Patreon, you can get a bunch of perks like bonus episodes, um, a new podcast called Sci Guys After Dark. You can get access to every single Sci Guys live show, the live show that we do every second Sunday. All those things and more. So head there, patreon.com forward slash Sci Guys, mm. if you'd like. Access to intimate details of our lives. No. No. Oh, sorry. We took that one away. <laughs> that one, that no, one, that one's out. like hotcakes. No, yeah, it's very popular. But we've also got, uh, we've also got a little question for you. So if you're listening, go to the YouTube, and if you're watching, you're on YouTube. Go to the comments and answer this question. The question is, are you religious? If so, what's your religion? Curious? No Ve- reason. Veganism. You're running a poll. No, I'm not a poll. <laughs> just a little survey. You know. <laughs> Shall we start the show? No. Not before we have thanked our patrons. We literally just did that. We I thought we had you. to thank them by name. No, that was the first thing we did. We, do, okay. we do thank them by name at the end. Right, at the cool. end. Yeah. So I guess we are starting Let's the show. Let's start the show. Yeah, okay. Let's start the show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co host, award winning producer, Jam. And award-winning director, Luke Cutforth. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Our film won an award. Wow, well, you won an award, didn't you? Yeah. yeah what I award was it? Going. We won Best UK Feature at Rain Dance. Well done. Good job. A little round of applause there. Fantastic. Well done, you and me. And you. Not you. You especially. I was in it. You were in it. You won yeah. too. Yeah, I was in it. Hey, hey. I have the award. You gave me the award for a good twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. It was award-winning great. voice actor. Oh, look at that! Wow. Yeah. We all won awards, didn't we? Yeah. We did. But today we are talking about cults. I don't have anything interesting. We're talking about cults. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. I want to start a cult. <laughs> I, yeah. What's your favorite cult? My favorite cult. Yeah. Whatever one Luke is starting. My friends tell me I make an interesting cult leader. I just I don't want to yeah. start a cult. I just like. So I want to live in a in a world where if I'm like out of flour, I can like go to my neighbor's house and I'm like, hey man, have you got any flour? And then they might have some flour and then they give me the flour and I'll also reciprocate. I suppose that's just having a neighbor. It's a but also I want to like social structure is what you're looking mm, for. Yeah, yeah. But also like I want to have like okay, all the kids have to go to school and we're all separately taking them. Let's band together and buy a community minibus. And then one of the parents each day takes the kids to school and picks them up. School bus. School bus. Yeah. And then eventually people just start saying I'm a cult leader. Well, it's because you want to start a commune. Mm. Yeah, I want to yeah. start a commune. Exactly. Well, I think, a commune leader. I think that you, so, you said you want to start a commune. That'd be great. A commune sounds fantastic. But I, I worry that you would accidentally become a cult leader. Yeah. Like fully yeah. accidental. Oh, you did that more or less. You became a YouTuber. Yeah. I had quite oh. a big cult, didn't I? Luke Cultfer. There you go. Huh? Luke Cultfer. Fantastic. <laughs> so what is it? We should probably get into this. What is a cult? You know what a cult is, first off? A small insular group of people who are usually under the under some crazy ideas. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. That's not bad. It's ah. difficult to describe a cult. Yeah. Luke, do you, you want to give it a crack? I would say like fanatical, uh, like group who like worship some kind of central yeah. idea mm. yeah so, i mean by that logic yeah Christians, countries countries, countries are any cults. any yeah Patriotism. I mean, <laughs> yeah i mean a lot, a lot of religions so th- th- it's difficult uh those are not cults necessarily i'm saying yes. countries religions those aren't necessarily cults but uh i've got a couple definitions for a cult and i will give them to you now uh so a cult can either be a sharply bounded social group or a diffusely bounded social movement held together through shared uh, commitment to a charismatic leader. Essentially what that means is it's like a really closely knit group um, linked by a charismatic leader. Like, it, the, like it... the Conservative Party. <laughs> you th- would you say he's char- charismatic? Yes, I think he's got a charismatic persona. Um, if you like that kind of thing. I suppose, yeah. 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 There's also another definition I've got here. Uh, this is from the Oxford English Dictionary from 2018. Um, uh, a, it's a small group of people who have similar religious beliefs or routines that others view as bizarre or sinister. Um, and then also in this research paper that I read, a cult is also um, a group or movement with a shared pledge to an extreme ideology that is typically embodied by a charismatic leader. Like the conservative okay. party. Yeah, no, this is the issue, right? This is what happens when you start saying, what is a cult? <laughs> so it doesn't start- need to have a leader. You don't need it. Right. I was going to say, you cults shouldn't, generally, you cults, shouldn't cults. always... Yeah, I can imagine cults without leaders. No, cults kind of do need leaders. 
Really? Need, yeah. Well, one leader. Or like a symbol. Awesome. Like, a, yeah. I was thinking instead of a leader, maybe a symbol. The leader like, gent- tends to be the symbol, uh, right? Okay. Or yeah, like a symbol or some kind of figurehead. Um, I, and yeah, the leader usually becomes that. You know, like uh, it's because, for example, could the monster raving loony party, who have a theoretical, hypothetical spaghetti monster who who they all worship. Do is they? that a cult? So yeah, they, the Monster Raving Looney Party is like a political protest party that mm. says that like the whole thing's a load of crap. And I think they worship the flying spaghetti monster. Yes, That's I've heard about this. Pastafarianism. Is that Pastafarianism? It's Pastafarianism. Okay. Which is a um uh, a sort of protest or uh mock satirical religion. Um but if it's your deeply held belief, then who am I to say otherwise, um, that is that's meant to sort of satirize the idea of believing in God, because no one can prove that there isn't a giant flying spaghetti monster that mm. you know is the is the one above all. You know, so I find it more, I find it more realistic, to be quite honest. Yeah, I just feel like if you're made of spaghetti, then why would spaghetti? Why would you be able to make spaghetti out of? Do you know what I mean? I feel like a god should be made out of a fundamental thing rather than something that. Well, maybe the Italians that. didn't invent spaghetti maybe they Unearthed discovered it, it yeah. from from the god the spaghetti monster came down and cut off a piece of his body and everyone went well like, we can make more of this actually, yeah, actually. If we just get some of this corn Plant this, uh, some spaghetti wheat trees. stuff maybe the spaghetti was made in the image of the lord well yeah. wheat was made in the image of the of the fetus lord yes this episode's gone way <laughs> off the rails thank you to our patrons for um voting on this topic um <laughs> we're doing it we gotta so yeah, I mean, this is the thing about cults, and like, I mean, we could probably spend a long time. This, this episode, I'm going to be totally honest. It's probably going to be light on the actual science of cults. We can do another episode on the psychology of cults, but there's a lot mm. of there's a lot of stuff to cover just about cults in general. Just the the idea, I think, is really interesting. Is what even what even a cult is? Because like, we're we're sitting here, we're talking about oh, what is what is a cult? What isn't a cult? And a lot of these definitions, it kind of reminds me of trying to define soup. Mm. Um, or a chair. Great clip on our Patreon. Go watch it. You have to go down yeah. quite a while. Yeah, I mean, I think you can just search for it. And it'll show up. Search for it. What? On our what Patreon. is? What is soup? What is soup? Yeah. Good clip. And it's this is the thing. It's it's difficult to describe these things because we know generally what a cult is, right? We've got a feeling for what a cult is, but when you start to describe a cult, you you kind of start lumping in some other things that we probably don't want to call cults. I guess because I suppose you're generally describing a cult or you're accusing something of being a cult relative to your thing that you're in which you think is not a cult yeah Yeah. absolutely if you're in your country or your religion or your political movement or whatever you're in that you define as like this is true this is a thing that's actually based on truth then relative to that something can be a cult but then trying to define something objectively as a cult is a different thing and I think the issue is that uh, along with that, in in your sort of subjective definition of what a cult is, it is inherently, the, a cult is essentially just a thing, but with negative spin, right? Yeah. Like you, the only reason we don't want to call, say, Christianity a cult or the conservative party a cult is because a cult is, is what those things are, but with negative connotations. Does that well, make sense? Well, Christianity is kind of a cult because... They, then the leader is Jesus, who they believe is continuing to be alive. So Look, he's still, they think he's dead, but he, he's coming back. No, well, they think Jesus lives on uh, in spirit oh, form right, okay, and that sure. he will reform into hum- humanity again. So they, their leader is still mm. present mm. As, according to their beliefs. Yeah. Just not physically at the yeah. moment. That's the thing. Cult, when you try to, to, to define it, you include a lot of things that people don't want to call cult. And the only reason they, the only reason they don't want to call it a cult is because cult is basically just a negative it's a negative name for a group of people that are fanatical about something and people want to put a positive spin on that sometimes so there is a difficulty in that but i mean i guess we're all kind of operating under the general idea of what a cult is it's like a sort of group um that are extreme um the two like would be viewed by most people as being extreme and follow um a leader um who is particularly particularly charismatic and and additionally cults tend to like they, they tend to sort of make people do things that um, they probably on their own otherwise would not do. Yeah, um, right. yeah like the sort of like, uh, you know, the, the Kool-Aid, the whole drink, drinking the Kool-Aid thing, um, the, like the Jonestown Massacre, all, all of that sort of stuff, right? Um, people, lead, leading people into harming themselves where they otherwise wouldn't, right? Um, like they just, they, they just end up being totally drawn into this and following this leader and whatever sort of rules are laid down. Would you say that cults and cultish beliefs 
are generally not true? Or could you have a cult that's actually like a superior worldview than the current paradigm? And would that then be a cult or would that be like a paradigm shift? Well, I think a cult is, you gotta, this is my point here. I think cult as a term is inherently, um, is inherently flawed in that it is, it describes a number of things, but what differentiates a cult from the rest of the things that cult doesn't describe is that you ascribe a negative connotation okay. to whatever you're describing as a cult. So when it comes to truth, I feel like you could. It doesn't really you, take it into account. It doesn't. It doesn't hugely take. You could label it as a. You could label those like something as a cult, if it is yeah. extreme to you, right? So you could say, "Oh, it's a paradigm shift." But to the people before the paradigm shift, you could say it's a cult. Although I personally, I would say you you couldn't really call something a cult if it follows truth, right? But then, we've, as we discussed on Sci Guys After Dark. Truth is a difficult concept to get to. Well, I guess it depends because there will be some people who uh, would want to cling on to the old paradigm, mm. who would call the new paradigm, if it was closer to truth then rather mm -hmm. than being truth, um, th they would call it a cult and they would call it untrue because of their unwillingness to change. Um, whereas the people who had joined the cult, there was actually a paradigm shift mm. um, that was closer to truth and maybe a more effective way of running a society or that kind of thing, um, would be sort of... But like, you know, calling it a paradigm shift, right? Yeah, I just thought of a perfect example to exactly what you're talking about. I think I've thought of one as well. Yeah, the transgender yeah, cult. Yeah, the right? transgender <laughs> cult. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> the one I thought of. Yeah, transphobes that call trans people the cult, the trans cult. Yeah, well, the yeah. transgender cult being yeah. anyone that thinks that trans people are, you know, all right, fine. Wow. As what you a know. cult! <laughs> oh, I feel like it's it's it's, it's insane. Sorry, right, I think you're playing. I think you're playing down. The incredible <laughs> paradigm shift that was realized by the LGBT community, but yes. Yeah, sure. can I just, uh, just uh, I want to point out that a lot of a lot of people, right? Turfs, I say a lot of people, a lot of people in the UK, turfs in the UK will often say um, the transgender cult, yeah. and I feel like it is it is crazy almost to call someone else a cult when your when your sort of uh, side is there is this specific group of people who are inherently disgusting and scary, and we shouldn't trust them. Well, but that they they are holding on. They're doing what I said there, which is like they're holding on to an old yeah, paradigm. Absolutely. And so they see themselves as the default, right? And they yeah. see the new yeah. the new cult as <laughs> as the this like changed thing that's different to the default, which is like men are men, women are women, mm. male equals man, female equals woman, <laughs> etc. <laughs> but it's inherent. I, I, my point is, it's kind of inherently silly to to point to people being like. Well, actually, this group of people are all right. Um, they're, they're fine. As as people go, mm. they are largely the same as other people. To see that, to see that group, and think, wow, they are a cult. Whereas we over here, <laughs> like, who don't want anything to change, and who are, you know, scared of one specific group of people for n no sort of tangible reason, we are not the cult, but they are. I just they think definitely it's, are. Yeah, I just think it shows like a kind of. Just this lack of self awareness, almost. I think that takes us right into the different types of cults. Do you, do you want to oh, talk about the different types? types? Well, um, yeah. So a lot of this is from. I mean, I've I've got I've got uh, things from a few places. I got some of this from the APA. This one is uh, from uh, Columbus State. So um, it's uh, it's a paper called Cults: A Psychological Perspective, um, and it just talks a lot about cults. So there's some different types of cults. So do you want to do you want to get into that? Yes, please. I want to take a guess, take a stab at um, any kind of cult. Just, just a general, a general description religious followed by cult. the word cult. Well, let's see, let's see if religious cult is there. A sex I think, cult. Uh, religious cult oh. is there. Did you say sex cult? Yeah. Well, you know a lot about cults. So religious <laughs> cult. <laughs> I was an aspiring cult leader. Yeah, well, I had to do the reading. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you would accidentally just become a cult leader, Luke. I don't think. I don't feel like you need to research it. I think that you are, you're, you're mostly there already. I'm just instinctively a cult leader. I'd like to know which of the cult types you think I will start when we've heard when, I, when we've heard them all. Well, 
Why don't we go from the start? Yeah, go on. And I'll say this. Look, you're not going to start this first cult that's here, um, which is a racist cult. I feel, oh. like, I feel like we're fairly- Okay, now I'm getting the gist of the types. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're okay, fairly fine. comfortable. In, like I mean, look, I love that you okay. inherently knew the types of cults that I was after. That is- <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the KKK? Is that a racist cult? Uh, yeah, the Ku Klux Klan are a racist cult. I um, think so. Yeah? Yeah, well, I, mean, I would assume. I heard I don't think so. I also no, heard I don't bit. think so. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Just I, think they're, I they're do actually... think so. <laughs> well, that hat is looking a bit pointy there, Jam. I was originally going to say I hope so, but then I was like, mm, that could be taken the wrong uh, way. For our listeners, Jamp has taken off his sheet with the eye holes cut out for today only. Excuse me? Yeah, but he puts a beanie on top, so it doesn't quite look as pointy. It's difficult no. to tell, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Take off the beanie and the full, <laughs> the full, <laughs> the full outfit. It's like one of those pop-up tents, you know? <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> so bad. Either that or the hat is what keeps on the jamp suit. Yeah. I, Underneath, yeah. there is the KKK the skin. suit. Like Superman. Oh, wow. So you're wearing this jamp suit just to hide that you're a racist. That is, Are you suggesting that that is extreme commitment. The KKK outfit is the true form. Yeah. Of, of, of KKK, you. Of of, you. Of not, not me. I just want to say no. to any of our listeners um, and, and viewers, uh, please, for the love of God, do not start, um, start a joke of jamp being racist because that just will not fly. Okay? I'm oh, saying God. it right now. No jamp is racist memes in the Discord. <laughs> no jamp is racist comments. I will take away the Discord and I'll take away the channel. <laughs> I have the power. So racist cults. Uh, yeah, Klu uh, the Ku Klux Klan um, is a racist cult. Ident essentially, the idea is that they, it, it says here, they often practice prejudice, discrimination, and hatred hatred towards a group that is of a different race than the cult members. Sorry, that's when you say they practice. It's like they get together and go, right, okay. I'll be the black guy. <laughs> and then I walk up and then you will practice being racist. You're not racist enough, but uh, keep, keep at it. Keep at you're, it. You're, keep at it. You'll be racist one day. I will say I have seen a lot of people that are very poor at being racist. I've, I've been on the receiving end of that. They try real hard. Yeah, you were they're telling me the other day about people who are really rubbish at being racist to you. Yeah, I mean, they're really, there's lots of people that are really rubbish at just insulting me in general. Someone... Someone said, is this the leftist man who who calls himself a feminist? I was like, sure, I guess. I guess. You think you're trans or <laughs> something? I don't know, man. I don't, yeah, know. No, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know whether, like, so honestly, sometimes I get an insult and I'm like, I'm struggling to understand what they're saying. I think they're meant to imply that you're not a real man. Oh. Yeah. I, but like, why and is... The, and by extension that they are. Yeah. Well, mm. I, this is the thing. I, I struggle to understand what what they're insulting and why it is insulting really but that's that's not for today we're talking about cults so the idea is a racist cult is essentially just it, it, it's it's what it says in the tin in it it's a group of people that really strongly believe in uh this sort of superiority or inferior inferiority of another race and so they all gather together they put on their silly little costumes sometimes mm, yeah and mm. They actually they are quite do silly, pretty you? horrible things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they would if it wasn't for, I suppose, the horrible things they do. Yeah. They'd be quite fun and silly, wouldn't they? Like a fun, silly little thing to laugh at. If it wasn't for you know the majority of what they're known for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If just a bunch of people got a bunch of grown men who think they're really like hard got together and dressed up mm. and danced around. Yeah, it's not very, kind of yeah. kind of funny. Interesting. Not, not very practical the other stuff added either, on, it? though, not funny. No, yeah, no. Interestingly, this uh, also brings up uh, a new Black Panther Party for self defense, um, which apparently is a racist cult. It's similar in name, it says, to the the Black Panther Party, but it is different. Um, apparently, they are quite anti Semitic and anti Caucasian, so they're kind of black nationalist or black separatist. Mm. But there is that. There is a, there is definitely a line between this is okay and Mm. This is not okay. And according to this paper, that's pushing into the that's pushing into the uh, sort of culty no, culty no. end. Yeah. Uh, another one that I love um, uh, is Doomsday cults. Oh, oh yeah. of course, yeah. A Doomsday yeah. cult. So what what do you think a Doomsday cult might be? There's always like a prophecy Preppers. of end times coming soon, and this small group of people get together and they basically just prepare for the end. Yeah, exactly. Together. And another yeah. thing as well is that they can also bring about the end, as in, oh. they, they if we come together, we, we can create a doomsday, a renewal, a rebirth, you know? Oh, usually their leader is like the one that's going to take them on to the next the next world or whatever, right? Yeah, that's it's a right. common the Mormons. Theme. That's just religion. 
I mean, yeah, the but, Mormons, but the original Mormons, they like banded around, banded yeah. about this one Joseph guy, Smith. went on a walk somewhere and thought that the end of the world was coming. He was going to lead them to paradise. Yeah, no, I think this is, this is again, you bring that up, you bring up the Mormons there. And what's interesting is that at the time that they were new, they could almost be considered a cult, mm. right? Mm. Um, but now they've, they're, they're a little bit more mainstream. And so you can't really... You can't describe them as that, if that makes sense. I think you should be able to. You should, you can. It's offensive. It's also like the, you can. Jesus and the disciples, that's a cult. Regardless of the, whether there's truth to it, that's a cult. Yeah, well, I mean, th again, again, this is my issue with the term cult. It is. It describes a vast number of things, except it's just the bad one of the, this vast number of okay, things. Okay, well, I'm meaning just cult as in like, n like no judgment. But it is a cult. <laughs> it's a neutral cult. I, I know yeah. what you mean, and I, I think that's a useful. It's a useful term yeah. because it points out. It, it's it's very it's very easy to point out your own personal bias there, right? That um, I think this is a cult, but I think this other thing is not a cult, despite the fact that they're very similar. Yeah, yeah. we need a new word. It basically, means loads of people fanatically following a charismatic leader. Uh, and we're we're withholding judgment to see if it turns out to be good or not. <laughs> Actually, so you you were talking about we were talking about doomsday cults and yeah. uh, Jamp, you mentioned that the leader would take them to onto paradise or that's the thing I've noticed. Yes, I was watching Joy of Sect last night. What is that? The Simpsons episode. Um, of course. <laughs> completely, completely unrelated to this. I just thought I'd watch, and they do a really solid job of um, actually looking at how people get into cults. They make jokes about it, obviously, but. Watching that episode after having read about this, they do a pretty decent job, yeah. and we'll, we'll probably see a little bit of that later. So they've got that charismatic le charismatic leader that's going to take them on to sort of salvation um, after the world ends, you know. Um, uh, so that, there's, you've got doomsday cults, uh, religious cults. We've kind of touched on as well. Um, it says they're the most notorious type of cult, um, but obviously religious cults overlap with a lot of different cults as well. Because I mean, the Ku Klux Klan, I'm pretty sure is. Um, Christian, right? They are uh, you, sure. You pretty so, much have yeah. to be like white and Christian yes. to be a part of it. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm fairly. I'm sure someone will say in the comments. But I'm fairly sure that it is. Um, it is quite quite tied to that. I mean, they burn crosses on people's. Um, That's always confused me. I don't know. Why I, I are don't, they burning the cross? I've been meaning to look into that. The actually. cross is meant to be like quite important. If you burned the cross before Jesus was put on it, that'd be quite good. I'd be rather good, I think. Yeah, because mm, yeah. then, because then he wouldn't died. have, he wouldn't yeah. be tired carrying it up the hill. Oh, right, the, yeah, the dying thing. I yeah, guess. Sure. Died, yeah. I just thought it'd be easier to carry in a, some bags. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's ash. Could have had an extra three days, really. <laughs> right. Well, hold on, wait. Wait. An extra three days. Yeah, he was dead for three days, wasn't he? he came yeah. Back. Oh, yeah, but he didn't come days. back forever. Uh, yeah, no, okay, no, right, yeah. that makes sense. They came okay. back yeah. to say yeah. bye. Yeah. yeah, which is yeah. honestly quite quite nice. Although, really, you knew you were going to be killed, so say bye then, right? I guess so. Yeah. Right? You know. I don't know if he did know he was going to be killed, because I think he does say, Father, why have you forsaken me on the cross? So I don't know if he can predict the future. Well, he can. He, he knew he was going to be killed. He had the Last Supper. What if he was just... Oh, put, yeah. Put and he fully, like, kissed... Oh. Uh, no, no, hold on, that was... Judas kissing him, but he knew that Judas had betrayed him. Honestly, we our Bible knowledge is poor at best. So, oh my God! So we were talking about a specific cult that I said Doomsday. maybe we shouldn't call them cults, and I forgot that under religious cults, the the, the church, the the Jesus Christ Church of uh, Latter Day Saints, or the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Do you know? Do you know what another name for that is? Pick a more boring name. Do you know what another name for those is? Um, the Mormons. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Fully described. Um, <laughs> fully described as a religious cult. Um, they've got polygamy, a bunch of different things. I mean, all the Mormons I've met are very lovely. Um, they just seem to be very lovely people. Although their views on gay people, not so hot. Um, but you know, uh, the, the, generally they are very kind. But then yeah. you always meet people. You like, I've only ever met Mormons when they're doing missionary stuff. Well, so. also you only met you've only met the Mormons that they allow to do the missionary stuff. Yeah, maybe all the horrible Mormons are allowed out. They all have to do missionary stuff. Okay. Yeah. No, but like uh, this is this is and this is what's this is what is I think difficult because you can criticize these beliefs. You're not necessarily criticizing the person. And also, you're not trying to undermine those beliefs, right? Like, it's this is what's difficult difficult about calling something a cult, because there's a lot of parts of Christianity that would be a cult, 
were they not somewhat more mainstream, you know? Yeah, but also there are like different sections of Christianity yeah. could have will have begun as sort of a cult within like a like a sect within the Christian church. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And we'll probably get in trouble for this, but Scientology, another religious cult right there. Um No, I believe that. Absolutely. Uh oh. <laughs> I just mean that angry one you don't touch, Corey. <laughs> we're not big enough for them to come for us. But, um... <laughs> if we're not here next week, you know why. <laughs> if Tom Cruise has replaced me. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some science. <laughs> Honestly, I've been thinking it'd be really fun to get into um it would the be the Scientology? It would be, I think it'd be really fun to get into Scientology. In fact, I went to a Scientology center once and had them yeah, you know, do me. Yeah. They told me I was depressed because of um Oh, I don't know. I needed them to help my depression, and I'd seen a doctor and was yeah, of course, yeah. And I'd seen yeah. a doctor and was on antidepressants at the time, where I'd been prescribed antidepressants. And I was like, well, actually, uh, no, this is why I'm depressed because my brain broke. And they were like, no, 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 you're depressed because we can help you. What? Yeah, oh, you're depressed. Said, oh. Sorry, you're depressed, and we can help you. And you're right. depressed because of stuff, uh, because of stuff that's happened you to you. Haven't spent enough time with us. Enough, yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. And then we get to, and then it's. When you leave, it's you genuinely almost exit through a gift shop. There, there's like books and stuff that <laughs> yeah. you can buy for exorbitant prices. One of my, my friend that I went with bought one of their um, like sort of leaflets, I think for a tenner or something, and it's only a, it's only a few pages long. But it's really interesting going in. And I thought, how great would it be to, um, and I probably won't be able to do this now that I've said it on the podcast, but um, I wasn't going to do it anyway, would be to sort of be a mole in the in the Scientology in the Scientologist. But again. I realized that I probably am not strong enough to stand up to that level of brainwashing. I genuinely don't think really? I Really? I think I'm very stubborn, but I I think I think they could get me. Really? That's the thing I was gonna want I was gonna ask is like, to be fair, they were telling you this stuff. You didn't test it. You didn't go in and go, Well, all right, I'll give it a chance, see what happens. Right hypothesis, my hypothesis is not gonna work. Give it six weeks, see if it works. I fully recognize how dangerous they are. Sure. Yeah, I, I just I I think I'm an incredibly arrogant person, but I'm not as arrogant to think that uh, I can stand up to that level of. Really, you think it works that well? I. It's not that I think it works that well. It's that I am cautious that it right. it may work. It may work. That I I think ultimately, it will probably work better than I give than I give them credit for, and yeah. it's not something you want to be. Uh, sort of. If you find out for yourself, it's too late. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to be like, oh, this will be fine. And then you suddenly you're in it. And I don't know, maybe they make you do something horrible um, so that they've got dirt on you so you can't leave. You know, that's what a lot of... Like, like the Billingdon Club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, seriously. It's like, I, I, I would very much love to be a fly on the wall or get into it and see what's actually going on at the top level. Because you know it's all, like, you know, if people come out and say, oh, it's not great stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'd be curious. But also... I think they could get to me, get in here. You know? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't know anyone that I think could stand up to it. I'll try. No, I won't. no, no. Go on. Let's yeah. chuck jam in. Yeah, stick them out. So I've also got something here about the need for cults. Um, it, it's you guys know pyramids, pyramid schemes, mm. right? Yes. They're sim. They're in a similar sort of thing in that the their sort of structure is similar. You've got someone on the top, and then it kind of goes down and down, and there's more people on each like subsequent like lower level. Where? Yep, like stacking Tupperware. Or no, no, like Tupperware. Tupperware was one of those companies where like, you go oh. to your friends' houses and sell them Tupperware, yeah. and then you convince all the friends you sold Tupperware to to also themselves sell Tupperware, <laughs> and then they convince their friends to sell Tupperware, and it's Tupperware all the way down, and the money must follow, flow to the whoever is the top Tupperware person. Uh, yeah. I did not but, know that, that was the Tupperware was a pyramid scheme. Well, I don't. Okay, I don't know if it is. No, no, if it was. If it was, yeah, no, that's that's a pyramid scheme. I believe that that's how Tupperware guys start. It's yeah. kind of it's well, it's it's kind of a multi level marketing scheme. Yeah, yeah MLM, exactly. Which is, is like you know, like Avon, Avon and all that. Yeah. Avon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, or, or the sort of candle parties and everything. Like you know, yeah. Oh, as soon as you open this, you've got a. There's there's lots of different forms. And of summers, that. really? And summers do and summers parties. That's probably a little bit different, though, isn't it? I think I think it's somewhat similar where you become an Ann Summers salesperson and you put on an Ann Summers night for your friends. That's I'll do one for us. Do that, yeah. yeah. I think that so I think the key I think the key is that you 
you get more people. So what I think it's, it's probably slightly different uh, to Avon and, and, and that sort of stuff because they're just kind of sales representatives. But the, I think the key point with that is that, um, and I don't know enough about Ansemers and Avon to really say this, but yeah. the whole point is that you take someone, you, you've got one, you've got a person and you have them selling to other people, but you also have them recruiting other people to be below them and they take a share of the people that they recruit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and ultimately it's a kind of flimsy business model in that you can make a lot of money. But most of the money flows to the person at the top because it's yeah. all all flowing up. Is that not an MLM? Yeah. And is that not a pyramid scheme? A pyramid scheme. I think a pyramid scheme is a type of LML. M M M M L M. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so again, what it talks about here is that uh, cults usually focus on uh, people that have gone through some kind of loss, and it people get into them through loneliness, um, offering people community and friendship, and you can understand how that how like why that works right like through just human evolution we crave community we're sort of communal animals we need we need that level of sort of um safety we need we need other people to feel sort of happy you know if you take a person put them in isolation i mean you, you know what um uh, sort of solitary solitary confinement does to people yeah you, you can genuinely go clinically insane mm. just from being alone for an extended period of time so we we definitely need to be around people and a cult can offer that kind of community that sense of um family and give you direction in life as well and sort of safety security all of those things it's interesting that like i was actually targeted uh by when i was not very well uh, in a very good mental health place a few years ago i was like repeatedly targeted by i think jehovah's witnesses um to try and get me to come along and i i didn't go but they got my number and they would text me quite a bit and they would like try and, and it's weird because from their perspective they think they found the truth and they think that they're bringing you in yeah. to help you yeah but they but they're also separately they are a group of people with a shared belief that are targeting somebody vulnerable in order mm. to bring them in and they themselves haven't questioned the validity of the thing they are pushing. So that's the funny thing is if you think you found the truth about something, but you don't question it at all, then yeah, it's weird. Yeah, the thing with Jehovah's Witnesses, and I think what's I, this, this is this is why I want to do multiple episodes on this because we could do an entire episode on the psychology of cults, but just the actual topic of cults themselves. Mm. There's there's so much to dig into there. For Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, you can, again. You can't really call them a cult because too mainstream, but there are a lot of there are a lot of extremist practices within the sort of Jehovah's Witness community. Um, the, the shunning that they do, the people that leave the fold, essentially. Yeah. You, you, have, you, have you both heard about that? I've watched uh, YouTube videos of people who have left and they get like, I can't remember what the term is, but there's a term where they get like, Bard mm. and that's, their, no, their family. That's Scientology, isn't it? Is it Scientology? That's in I've, Louis Theroux, the Louis Theroux documentary about Scientology. I've heard a similar thing about Jehovah's Witness, Sim, Jehovah's where Jehovah's Witness where their yeah. family can't refer to them ever again. Can't contact their them. friends and family can't contact them, can't talk about them. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite there bad. is a specific yeah. term for it, at least in Scientology. I forgot the term, but yeah, there is a term for it for Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, it does happen. It does happen with Jehovah's Witnesses as well. And another thing as well is the whole sort of and again, I understand like having your beliefs, but this is this is something that bothers me as well. Letting kids die because they don't believe in blood transfusions, mm. you know, obviously for whatever reason. But people will let their will let children die because oh, we don't believe in blood transfusions. Cool, great. It's a child. Let them let them do whatever when they're an adult when they yeah. can make their decisions. But I, this but is they the believe that they're condemning that child to hell for having like this is how the sort of the like logic yeah. Up, like upholds itself it's like a like a logical loop kind of thing um yeah they believe they're condemning the child to hell for not by not like if they were to you do the blood transfusion yeah so like yeah again, they, can't, but again, they can't do it no, i know they can't do like okay wait till it's an adult but ah. this is this is what's bold this is what i think is difficult is that you need to then when you're talking about cults or when you're talking about any sort of religious group or anything anything along those lines you need to separate it you need to separate the individual from the institution, the sort of the, the larger group, the idea. Mm -hmm. Because while I don't think that um, necessarily the people that genuinely believe, yes, this, like we have the word of God, you know, we know the truth. Um, I, I don't think they're inherently bad for mm. believing that. Mm. The structure that allows them to treat people so horribly um when you, you treat people so horribly yeah like 
that that is a, a real issue you know the shunning even okay so yeah. understandably right if we look at um if we look at even we talk about science right we've got the whole we've got um the sort of we've got science wherein we try that's that's one method of understanding the world right that's one lens through which to view the world and when people don't believe in that we will not necessarily shun them but we will treat them definitely differently right look at people that refuse to be vaccinated because they don't believe in this the science that points to it being perfectly safe right mm. we definitely treat them differently to most people but is but you know because we believe we have the truth and to be fair in the, the difference between these is that one one of one of these groups has evidence right yeah sure. and the others obviously don't really have quite a strong evidence mm. I, I feel like I feel like this, that kind of, um, that kind of, well, let's treat the people that um, are going to disregard this somewhat differently. That works only when you are operating on evidence and not faith. And even then, it's like it's 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 very murky. There's so many gray areas there, yeah. right? The thing I find really difficult with some of these sort of beliefs is that it's almost as though even the things that that people profess to believe, they don't really believe them. Mm. So, for example, the example I'd give you is. If you ask anybody if they believe, anybody who's in the Christian church, if they believe that Mary was a virgin and mm -hmm. gave birth to a, to Jesus, I think they'll say yes. And then if you tell them that the word for virgin, the original transla the originally translated uh, word from, I think, Hebrew, doesn't mean virgin. It means young woman. Oh, really? So if you yeah. believe the original Bible said it, it is the word of God, it never claims Mary was a virgin. It also never says, like, the understanding we have of sin, which is then the thing that people use to shun people mm. or use to punish people, whatever, is also a mistranslation. It means, like, one of the main uh, translations for it is, like, to make a mistake mm. or to miss the point of life. It's literally like missing, like missing the target if you were an archer. Yeah, it's interesting. It doesn't it? mean to, like, commit a thing that means you'll go to hell. The only way... It, the only way I've understood it to mean like you could go to hell would be um, if you consider like a bunch of situations in your life are really unpleasant. You're in hell. You're mm. in a really horrible place. So if you make continuing mistakes you'll about the point way, yeah. of life, you'll be in hell. Yeah. That's Not in like they're in an actual place. <laughs> That's what's interesting to me because the Bible has obviously been uh, translated into a number of different languages. I mean, Hebrew, I think Latin, I think um, English, obviously as well. Yeah. Um, was it originally in Hebrew? I can't. I can't remember. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been it's been translated from a number of different languages, and it's gone through like so so many different hands, right? And even the parts that we think were written by certain people weren't necessarily written by those people. Mm. Some things don't line up with the Bible, um, and so taking it literally, and and especially the English translation, that's just it's so odd. I mean, think about when you get bad subtitles watching a, like you know a foreign mm. film, yeah, right? It's that, but multiple times over across like you know hundreds and hundreds of years, and. So the Bible was in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Just there we go. Slip that in. I thought there. Aramaic. I was gonna say, but I was like, mm, I'm not. yeah. So, um, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. There you go. And that's that is what is so frustrating that there's so many different stories there. And you were saying, look, that sort of hell. The only way you could understand hell is sort of bad things will happen to you in your life, and you'll be in hell. What's yeah. interesting is that Judaism doesn't have a concept of hell, as far as I'm aware. Right? They don't have mm. hell, the sure. sort of Christian hell. So at some point between the transition to Judaism from Judaism to Christianity, the idea of hell that must in. have been introduced, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and it's, I, think, I think from my understanding, my way of making sense of this is that hell is basically sort of a cognitive distortion whereby you're basically saying, you're trying to down, uh, down regulate certain behaviors. You're trying to mm -hmm. say, if you do this behavior, um, you can't say if you do this behavior, we'll charge you a million pounds or we'll put you in prison for a hundred years or whatever. Because those things, you know, they're not, um, they're, they're like rational mm -hmm. possible things to happen to you. Uh, and, and so then you might not do it, but then you've also got like, well, what if I get away with it? Or what if like all those other things mm -hmm. you can, you, like your brain can try. If you, what you're trying to do there, I think, if you are ruling a country or ruling a people, is you're trying to give them the maximum possible, basically you're saying, if you do this thing, maximum possible bad, definitely will be caught. It will last forever. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to sort of cover all the possible dimensions or that the brain could use mm. to decide how it would decide to do something and go, no, 
to every single one. Might I get away with it? No. Will it end? No. How bad will it be? The worst it could possibly be. And 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 that's what it is. That mm. that's what it is. It's like a, it's almost like a com- computational thing, right? It's just going trying to downregulate possible behaviors. Um, but we've People, sort of yeah. we've got this sort of mythic literalism of believing it's actually a thing. Yeah, I just think that as well, people, it's, if you're trying, if no one can sort of come up with this entire list of things that will outsmart every potential future person. For example, you've got the whole thing of, oh, well, if God is all loving and all caring, um, then why would God send people to hell? And if you've got, you've also got the idea of, you know, like, oh, if, if God was, you know, just, if God was good, then why do children get cancer and die? Right? Yes. Why does that happen? No good God would let that happen. Therefore, God's judgment is, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to abide by it. So, act. like, there's so many different explanations for why you don't need to follow the rules or why the rules, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's it's interesting that even like, even with your explanation there, Luke, that um, sort of coming up with that, coming up with these ways to get keep people in line almost, still, it's just, it's just almost, it's almost not going to work. It's almost impossible, right? I just think it's really interesting that, no matter, even if the sort of concept of God, heaven, and hell were made up to make people be good, mm-hmm. and just you know go through the list, and be like, okay, every single way to make sure that people can't get can't um, sort of weasel their way out of this, people will still do it. You know, people well, by just not believing in it. Well, not even by not believing in it, by uh, by using the rules that are uh, provided, like by using the rules that are given to them. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean. Like you could say, oh well, you could believe in this god, but this god is clearly not just. Therefore, yeah. why would one follow the rules? Of, you know what I mean? Mm. Well, but then they're not god. As in, if they are, if the basically what you're what you're proposing there is the the universe is either then they're not god, and mm. there's actually a god, and we've just picked the wrong one, mm. or the universe is run by like an idiot who's <laughs> not very nice. <laughs> well, in maniac. which case, you've got bigger problems. Well, yeah, no, this, is, this is what I, th- I think about this, though, because we look at science, right? You've got bacteria and ants and whatnot that we, and mice that we work with all the time. And ultimately, we think of ourselves as being... We have a, le- we have a kind of morality that is not accessible to, to, those, uh, to those forms of life that we work with. And that we... we I mean, think about the, the bacteria that we literally just... The strains of bacteria that we literally just create in a lab. Mm. We just do that. We just make them. We mess with mice genetics constantly and, and, and do all that. Drosophila, fruit flies, we mess with them too. And if you were to try and go down to their level and explain to them what we're doing and why it's for the greater good to, to help this and that, they wouldn't be able to comprehend it. And so it's always very funny to me that, okay, two things. One, people think that if a god were to exist, that they could comprehend the morality of a being that is omnipotent, omniscient, and sort of mm. eternal. You know what I mean? Like, that's just... It, you're very arrogant if you think that you can understand something that is that ha, that has the all power and all knowledge, right? It's just outside the scope of a human brain. But also that like that morality would line up with what we think is good, because there's no reason that it would. I don't think that they do make that claim. I don't think they make the claim that you can understand the morality of God. No, I, 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 I know I think that... they make the claim that God has told us these things mm. and we, we obviously cannot understand them, mm. but we just follow them because the God has... Like, so in that situation, if you told the fruit fly a bunch of stuff and, the, and it was against what the fruit fly's instincts were mm. and the fruit fly believed that you were God, the fruit fly would do them not understanding why they were your, your opinion of what they, what they should do. I'm not trying to say it's uh, religious people that say that, oh, we can understand... The I I'm I talking about just in general. If people talk about, oh well, this doesn't make sense. As in, why would any good god do X? Oh, ah, right, yeah. Well, arrogant. obviously you wouldn't have a little human brain. Yeah. You don't know. You, you silly know? boy. Silly, exactly. Which is why I'm like, yeah, you should probably just pr- like if if God were to exist, you should probably just prove it. You know, just prove it, and then everyone will listen. It just seems maybe there somewhere. Maybe exactly. But then it seems silly to me. Like, oh, why would you not do that? But of course, I'm not going to understand, right? Because I I couldn't. If it were, it's just, it's a very frustrating problem. But let's get back to cult and a little bit more of the science on this. So what I think is really interesting, have you guys heard of the sort of power of the crowd, that, that, that sort of so, social mm, psychology idea? Mm. Um, mob wanna, mentality. Well, not, mob mentality is slightly different and a little more problematic in terms of its actual validity. Um, we can do, I mean, I, I'll link to a video actually in the description that's quite good on it. I didn't um, know there were different things. So there was a guy talking about the power of the crowd in um, a documentary on BBC mm-hmm. uh, recently about um, the storming of Capitol. Mm-hmm. And 
the guy was basically saying an individual, you know, no matter how difficult they are, you can talk to them, you can reason with them to a certain extent. They're not that much of a problem. This is a police officer talking, I think, or someone in terms of security. Um, but a crowd basically almost has like emergent properties that none of the individuals actually possess. Yeah. And people kind of get uh, swept up in things that they wouldn't otherwise do. So I saw a video by, I think, is it Tom Nicholas? Um, I think it's Tom Nicholas. Uh, it'll be linked in the description about mob mentality. And an interesting point, an interesting sort of point brought up in that is that in a lot of cases throughout history, mob mentality was brought up as a way to disregard the valid sort of concerns and reasons for a large group of people getting together to enact. Do, do you know what I mean? As in, they'll say, oh, well, it's mob mentality. Like, people wouldn't, there's, there are emergent properties. People wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for them like, getting swept up. Kind of like hysteria. Like, yeah, al almost like that. Yeah, the, people wouldn't be, the, people wouldn't be going so far or, or being so passionate about yeah. this had they not been swept up in the sort of crowd. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, I, this, it, it's a difficult thing because it's, it's it, I think it's slightly, it's one of those things that's slightly more shaky than we, um, than we might assume. Like, uh, for example, do you know the, you, of course you remember this, the uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. Uh, how yes. that is something that we all just assume as being sort of factual, but in fact, it's not really. Yeah. I think the sort of mob mentality is a little bit more shaky than we might, we might consider. So what I mean by the power of the crowd is more about social influence. And I guess it could kind of come into the mob mentality, but I think mob mentality kind of speaks more to a sort of, when there's a large group of people, you can't trust you. You can't trust what they're doing or saying because they're just getting swept up. Although, do you know? Do you know what I mean? Do you see the sort of distinction that I'm trying to? Not really. Okay. So, okay. So I'll I'll explain this this sort of um, experiment that was that was done. Um, they had a group of people on a busy New York street. I just look up um, at nothing in the sky. So when one person looked up at nothing, only 4% of people walking by joined uh, joined them. Uh, when five people um, stood and looked up at nothing, 18% of people joined them. And when uh, 15 people looked upwards, 40% of people then joined them, um, apparently nearly stopping traffic within a minute. Right. <laughs> and so there, there's that element of sort of social influence, right? And I don't think that necessarily means that what happened, that you, people lose inhibitions when in a, when in a crowd of people inherently you know right it's not that it can't happen Cause that's because looking up is a fairly innocuous thing yeah so yeah it's, it's to do with just like you're easily nudged by a crowd it's not like you lose all individual self and just become part of a machine absolutely and i think and it's i think a kind of watered down version of power of the of um mob mentality then well this is this is this is the issue i think that mob mentality is used as a thing is, is something to write off um valid concerns and i think that's an issue there whereas i think you could maybe talk about mob mentality in the form of cults but when it comes to cults when you've got people you know drinking kool-aid and doing horrible things along those lines it, it's it's not quite as simple as a lot of people are together and then they just lose inhibitions. There is there is a distinct process to getting people into cults. You know, there's this there is um, there's so much that goes into sort of getting people like mentally prepared to be in a cult. I mean, this this is the thing as well. When you come out of a cult, there are so many sort of psychological after effects. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I mean I know someone that was basically in a cult. I'm sure you, actually you do as well. I do. Yeah. You know, yeah yep. so, and you've met this person also. You get on quite well. Um, and there are a lot of there are a lot of psychological after effects to having been in a cult. Uh, but apparently, the the main one of the, one of the main things is to sort of um, understand if you understand this um, and study this um, and and uh, like because a lot of apparently a lot of cult leaders will abuse social psychology research. Right, mm -hmm. the, the, understanding that allows them to manipulate manipulate people in the way that they do. Um, and apparently greater understanding and greater awareness will help or could potentially help with that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, if, if you, if essentially the one thing to help avoid people getting drawn into cults is for people to understand how people get drawn into cults, which I don't think we've really got time for to do today because we've had so much conversation on just the yeah. general topic, but we could definitely, definitely do a good, good number of episodes. A on this follow topic. up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Honestly, just a, a, there are so many episodes just in in this sort of broad topic of cults. Um, I mean, I've I've got something here from uh, a man called Doctor Clark, um, who uh, studied more than five hundred uh, 
uh, current and former cult members since 1974. And this is from a 1982 New York Times article. So this is over a period of eight years. Um, and he said... <clears throat> in some respects, uh, the destru destructive effects of cult conversions amount to a new disease in an era of psychological manipulation. When kids come out of cults, they have symptoms you just don't normally see. Um, but many practitioners are ignorant of this disease and don't know how to treat it. Um, so essentially, I mean, back in the 80s, the idea was that when people were coming out of cults, there was a very specific sort of, I mean, let's call it post-cult syndrome mm -hmm. that arose. Um, and... You, people find it difficult to integrate back into normal life because when you get into a cult, there is just this overarching psychological manipulation. I mean, for example, I remember hearing, I, I think I've told you both about this, about the, um, what was it? The it was the ultimate sin or something. The, oh, oh dear, I can't remember it. Oh yes, you were telling us about basically this idea that um, within a, maybe potentially in a religious setting, um, the father of the family may say there is an ultimate sin and you're not allowed to do it That's and it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, and there isn't actually one. No, there's not one. Uh, but it's just used to sort of make you like Stay question everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And and this, and this this when you ask, it's so, it's, it is horrific, right? It is, I, I don't mean to, don't let my excitement fool you. It is absolutely horrific. Yeah. But it, psychologically, just incredibly interesting in, the, how well it can work to manipulate people. So so let's call it, yeah, the ultimate sin, right? The ultimate sin is something that if you do it, hell forever. Yeah. It, and everyone will know if you've done it. Yeah. It is so it, you, it is so obvious that people will know if you have done the ultimate sin and you will never, ever be able to pull yourself back from it. Oh, no. What is the ultimate sin, you may ask? Oh, what is it? You don't get to know what the ultimate sin is. Oh, no, that means like, and then, I need but to then, not but, do everything but then you then you ask me again, but, I, but uh, what is the ultimate sin? Why do you want to know what the ultimate sin is? Do you want to do the ultimate sin? No, no, I just want to know so I don't do it. Well, you're asking a lot of questions about the ultimate sin, which really makes it seem like you want... And so you've then got someone... And obviously there <sighs> is no ultimate sin. It's just... <laughs> If someone is doing, if someone is doing something, it basically gets this, it gets this thing in their think, head. Yeah, double think everything they yeah, do. Yeah, where it's like, oh, yeah. what if I can't do this? I can't so do that. So yeah, you come across like someone drinking and they offer you a drink and you're like, what if that's the ultimate sin? Exactly. Someone tells you about masturbation and then you're like, what if that's the ultimate sin? Someone offers you a joint and then you're like, what if that's the ultimate sin? Exactly. Oh God, I just won't do anything then. Oh, unless even... I have permission from someone like my dad or a religious leader. And you can't even yeah. question it. You're well. allowed to ask, is this the ultimate sin? But you no, know, but that's it, but that's the thing. If you, if you, um, if you, <laughs> if you build into the whole idea of the ultimate sin, let's say. I mean, again, I can't remember if it's called the ultimate sin or not. But if you build in the idea of that, then suddenly you, you've not only got someone not doing things, you've also got someone not questioning it. Yeah. If you like, if you build in, oh, questioning the ultimate sin makes it seem as though you want to commit yeah. that sin it's again it's like it's, a cognitive distortion it's like yeah. a logical loop where you you just are stuck and your only option is don't do anything but are you allowed if, if okay so if i'm if you're my dad and i'm asking you about the ultimate sin the ultimate sin and i'm not allowed to ask you what it is mm -hmm. and i'm not allowed to talk about the ultimate sin am i allowed to say i just want to check uh, i'm turning 18 tomorrow am i allowed to drink alcohol is that okay if I was if I was trying to manipulate you, it would depend on what I wanted. So I'd probably say um, that you're not allowed to do that, but I wouldn't explicitly say whether or not it was the ultimate sin. If that makes sense. That's right. really more mean. This is just this is like I mean, and in terms of manipulation, it is, it is very it is very simple, but it's very effective, evidently. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to remember with. Obviously, cults um, prey on lots of lots of different types of people, but specifically when you're raising a child in a cult, you can basically condition them from birth, essentially. But when you get people into cults, um, you know, as as an adult, they often go for people that are, like I said, lonely or experienced loss yeah. because I mean, or, or in, in as you said, in troubled times in their lives because those people are far easier to manipulate. And the sort of psychology of cults, just like um, broadly, is they use lots of different things like they fear for example that you can mm. use fear to condition someone into um believing what uh, be, sort of believing you i mean i know there was a time in my life when i mean i would have been very susceptible to a, a, to joining a cult yeah had it been had it been um sort of presented to me in the correct way yeah absolutely and i'm sure the same goes for both of you right like yes. yeah my my experience it basically was like i was going through a time when i was really not very well mentally and I was also having a sort of crisis of meaning and cr like 
just it felt like that basically my whatever my way of making sense of the world mm -hmm. wasn't adequate for whatever i was experiencing and then if someone came along and basically <clears throat> it basically takes down your um takes down your defenses mm. so some so if somebody like um can inject a new sort of operating system that helps you make sense of what you're going through then then it then it's then in and then like the walls go back up and it's gonna be really hard to uninstall that yeah i mean a cult is you can think of it almost as like a conspiracy group can't you um to an extent it's they're because they're a metaphysical conspiracy group yeah, yeah absolutely they're, they're positing some consp like some like spiritual conspiracy or um, that kind of thing. I mean, yeah. not even necessarily inherently metaphysical. I mean, that's that's that is what I mean here is that um, similarly, I think um, cults offer answers or offer um, sort of a, a structure to your life yeah. in the way that a conspiracy would offer answers, right? Yeah, meaning. I, I distinctly, yeah, I distinctly remember a time uh, with you where you, I mean, when you were very into sort of conspiracies for a brief period, and I wasn't very into conspiracies. I was. <laughs> I was very unwell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was very mentally unwell. I went so I was I very mean, into conspiracy theories. Those are those are entirely synonymous. Um sure. <laughs> they did happen to be I'm just saying the foundation layer was not ooh conspiracy. Well yeah, obviously. I think I think that I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I'm not trying to present you as someone who just got into conspiracies one yeah. time. But also I don't want to just sit and be like, "Hey, look, remember that time you went you went a bit off it?" You yeah, know? sure. So I mean, I remember that at that point, it was very it, from the outside. It very much seems like this could this could go very badly, you know. Yeah. Like, and I think it's very, I think it's very lucky, obviously, for you know, um, it's very lucky that you got out of that. But there are a lot of people who genuinely mm. don't. Who don't? And yeah. mentally ill people are incredibly vulnerable. I mean, particularly to cults, because like. Yeah. Who, like, who is gonna like who who like realistically, we don't care enough about mentally ill people in society in general, and it's very easy to pray. It's very easy to prey upon them. I mean, and that's what cults do really. They just prey on vulnerable people. And but also the fact that we're not very caring towards mentally ill people exacerbates exactly why it works. Mm. Because you're there struggling, and society is not helping you. And those cults come in and go, "Why are they not helping you? They're yeah. supposed to care." I mean, it's because there's a big conspiracy. Yeah. We religion care, does a, yeah. religion does a similar thing as well, though, which is why it's so different. I mean, honestly, it is. I I, I guess I, I, one thing that's uh, cults, I think, use similar tactics to different religions in getting people in um, and indoctrinating people, but maybe by slightly more abusive means in certain cases. That's not to say that major religions don't use sort of. Abusive means, but there are uh, there are a lot of religious cults, right? But do you and think it's they... so difficult to set? At, at some points, the lines get very blurry from between yeah. separating a religious cult from just plain, very religious sort of um, group or family. Do you think they use sort of nefarious means and abusing psychological quirks and psychological ha hacks? I suppose. Do you think they do that knowingly and on purpose, or do you think it is a function of how that sort of meme replicates itself? I think it's, I think there are it's multifaceted. So with a cult, generally cults are generally new and started by individuals, and then if if they last long enough, someone else can rise up and gain that power, right? Mm. So I think it really comes from, in some cases, with you know sort of a, the charismatic leader, it could be intentional to an extent, right? Mm. Because you want people to follow you for whatever reason, but it might be because you genuinely believe in what you in what you you're talking about, right? Mm. And I I think the distinction almost doesn't matter too much, as in where it comes from, whether it is intentional or whether whether it is um, sort of learned. Because when you're inflicting that level of harm, it kind of becomes irrelevant how intentional it is. No, of course, right? but I think I personally think the distinction is very important because. It means that you because if, if if the cult if it's like the case that many mm -hmm. cults the people doing it are perpetuating um, the cult using psychological tricks deliberately, uh, that is to say the the cult that they are trying to disseminate um, and the idea they're trying to disseminate is is untrue. They kind of are aware it's untrue and they are using psychological tricks to hook people in. Mm -hmm. That is one thing, and that means if 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 you're not doing that, if you are like 
in uh, if you're in like the world like we're in a, a society right we live in a society ha 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 and we aim to perpetuate our society and we don't consider ourselves to be well i know that the way our society doesn't work but i'm going to perpetuate it if actually cults generally the people in them do believe it and the idea and the structure of the cult replicates and grows using psychological tricks in an unconscious way on the part of the cult members, then you need to be very aware of that in yourself for everything you try to um, spread and everything you try to disseminate because you may be doing it and you wouldn't know. No, that's totally, yeah, okay, I guess that makes that makes sense. I, I wouldn't yeah. disagree with you there. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that on the level of, a, of an individual sort of member of a cult, when you get to the point to be able, when you get to have the, the, the power um, necessary to sort of enact those psychological tricks um or to abuse like the, 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 those forms of inherent me sort of uh, mentality in people i think that when judging that person individually it doesn't necessarily oh, matter absolutely. too much that's that's what in i the mean same way that but no, if someone's absolutely. violent because of a horrible past or if someone's violent because they're chosen to be violent you still put them away for a bit to keep them away from people because yeah. they're violent and well, you can damage other people. I mean, I guess on that front, it, it's a case of, well, I assume how do we would agree with that? No. Um, well, it depends on how it as in, <laughs> yeah, if somebody is violent because they were brought up in a violent home or if somebody's violent because they've chosen to be horrible now, you still need to keep them away from people. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I, my, all, I mean. all, all yeah. I mean is that on that front, uh, understanding where an issue comes from is important understanding the roots of an issue uh, are important how to deal with the issue so yes, if someone comes yeah. if someone if someone is uh violent from trauma then you deal with that you deal with that trauma if someone is violent for some other reason then you deal with that other reason right and so obviously in terms of when judging the individual the actions of the individual person um when i say judging the action of, of the individual person i mean this is bad okay whether they're doing it intentionally or not it is really bad i don't think it is a huge it is hugely important to debate whether they are doing it intentionally or not obviously when it comes to how to deal with that person then that's somewhat different but i don't think that necessarily come i, I don't think those two are ne necessarily super connected but i do agree with you in that it is important to understand from from you know the side of things that you were talking about Does that make sense probably <laughs> well <laughs> let us know in the comments if that makes sense <laughs> does that make sense but no it is interesting because in the simpsons episode the movementarians they were doing it very intentionally as in using these things very intentionally which i think was you know which is i think one way to do it but i genuinely think there are people that that do these things i mean this is this is what i mean is it i don't think it makes it all that less bad if someone be fully believes in what they're what they're doing or not because I, I don't feel like the end justifies the means in that sense yeah you know what i mean yeah but um i think that is basically it for the episode today why don't you let us know if you want us to talk more about cults and actually dig into the the science a bit more because today <laughs> was a little bit light on it but there's good reason for that and it's because um th there's there's a lot there is there is a lot and it's a very very interesting topic on the face of it this is a little bit more like after dark i think so if you enjoyed this episode definitely mm. check out after dark over on patreon.com forward slash side guys there's a brand new podcast that's released monthly where we don't really talk science we just talk you know everything else long tangents yeah, yeah basically About yeah anything the entire thing is a tangent but before we go we've got a little quick fire quiz don't we dun, oh. dun, dun, dun. cult edition so the quick fire quiz Easy. rules are the same as always. I will ask one question, just one question between the two of you. The first person to answer the question after buzzing in, after I finished asking the question, wins. What do they win, Jamp? Nothing. You gosh darn right. So Luke, what is your buzzer? Cult. Jamp, what is your buzzer? Ah! Wow. Yes, very connected. My question for you both today is, what is the name of the cult in the Simpsons episode, The Joy of Sex? Oh, for goodness. You literally sorry. just said it. Yeah. You just said it. I literally just said it. I said it because I forgot to write a quick fire quiz question oh. and I had to put in the answer. I know it ended with Aryans, mm -hmm. uh, but not Aryans as in the Aryan race. Um, <laughs> I just said it. I'm checking out. I don't know it. Um, How about I mouth it to you? Okay. There's like a set. Cult! cult. Movementarian. Well done, yay! yay! <laughs> well done, Luke. You got the answer right entirely by yourself. I did, if you're listening to the audio version. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, we do need to do a little patron readout, don't we? Oh, yeah. We need to oh, read out all of our patrons, yes, all of, of our new patrons. We need to thank them, don't we? Yes. So this is the point where we say thank you to the new patrons of this month, obviously. Uh, but uh, why, don't we, why don't we start off with Stryker? Thank you very much, Stryker. 
Thank you to Arth. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, Jasmine Barbosa. Thank you, Natasha M. Thank you, Noah Purchase. And thank you, Sif. But not the Warriors Very 3. Good. Sif gave us one DKK per month. I don't know what that means. Donkey Kong coin. Coin. With coin. With a K. With a K. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. If you would like to join our Patreon, just head to patreon.com forward slash side guys. You can join for as little as one US dollar per month, which is less than a pound per month. That's insane, right? That's pretty good. It's insanely low. Yeah. And for that, you get lots of cool stuff. And, you know, going up the tiers, you get more and more things. We've got we've got a whole you know, bonus ep- a bonus show for you. We've got a bonus episode every month. You can join our Patreon and have a very special patron color and a whole patron chat to join too. There's every episode of Sci Guys live available. There's so many things that you can get. What else can they get you to? They can vote on episodes. They can, yeah. There's After Dark, there's bonus episodes, there's live streams. There's, there's bonus little there's clips. Votes. Yeah. Of there's bonus clips, up. yeah. Lots of great stuff. Well, I think that is it. I think that's it for us today. So I think we're going to go now, aren't we? Please. We certainly are. Yeah. So we'd like to thank all of our patrons. Uh, and, you know, thank you for listening. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash sci guys. Or you can find and contact us at sci guys pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and this is YouTube and at SciGuys on TikTok too. <sighs> or you can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys and send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. Follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere and in my cult that I will be join- starting. I'll join. Yay! That sounds fun. Hey! Goodbye! Hey! Bye! <laughs> <laughs>